so you're from a non-technical background, but heavily in the mathematical realm. But I'm still curious, as somebody who didn't directly study data analytics or data science, what was it like transitioning into this more technical field? Initially hard, because um, when I graduated from my master's degree, I thought I, I knew everything. <laughs> I was like, this is it. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to apply everything I learned, all the econometrics, all the matrices. And then I went to work and then I realized this is not the way things work because I couldn't use Excel, not even Excel. So I had to learn quickly and I had to quickly realize that it doesn't even matter how concept your knowledge, uh, how advanced the concepts you, you've learned. If you don't have the right technical skills, you cannot show other people what you mean. And that is why you need to learn technical skills. It's not because you need to be good at Excel just so you're good at Excel. No, I think of Excel, SQL, Python, um, what else is Power BI, Tableau, even Neo4j that I code in now. They're just tools for me. It doesn't matter what tools I need to use as long as it's fit for purpose. So the transitioning was hard, but it's not an impossible thing to learn. So I would say Excel, pretty easy to learn. Mm -hmm. um, SQL is just a querying language, unless you're a database administrator and you're creating databases. Yeah. You don't even need to understand relational databases. You just need to understand that there's a primary key, a foreign key, and then you write some queries. You can take it to like a very advanced level with window functions, creating views, temporary tables. But what's out there? I mean, that's SQL, right? It, it is just SQL. It's not a programming language. You could write some code to like run as a as a program. You could, but why mm -hmm. would you? You could just use Python. Tableau, again, I think relatively simple to do it at a basic level. If you want to create the very advanced visualizations, they'll take time. But I would say don't do anything too complex. Like I'm a big fan of bar charts, line charts. That's mm. it. Yeah. Because they tell the story in a very simple way. Sometimes we see those crazy visuals with dark backgrounds where you can barely see what the data is about, which is, I just don't understand. Like they look really cool, but I'm telling you in the corporate world, if you create something with a dark background where people can barely read the text, they're gonna be like, are you joking? And that is why most of the things you see in the corporate world, they have a light text and, and they're not kind of like the YouTube style data analysis. They're like the real life data analysis that people do. Um, when it comes to Python, it was hard. So th that's the one thing I, I, I didn't do too great at because the first time I learned it, I actually failed and I just put it away. Mm. And that's when I decided, I was like, do you know what, coding is not for me. I'll do investment banking oh, wow. because it was, it was so hard. So it was my second rotation. I went into a data science team, credit model, risk validation. These were all people with PhDs and quantity subjects with 10 years of experience and amazing coding knowledge. So I went into this team um, I was so out of my depth because I didn't know Python before. Like I went into the team and I didn't know how to write a single line of code. It took me three months to write one line of code that didn't work, obviously. And then it took me about six months before I finally contributed something mm. that was extra on top of what they had. But I, I still, I didn't understand what I wrote. It just worked. <laughs> I didn't understand it. So after that, I kind of fell out of love with Python. And, and then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go into investment banking. I'm gonna utilize Excel and I'm just gonna get ahead only to obviously then realize that, you know what? I actually, I wanna get more technical. And then I went back and I learned Python focused on data analysis. So this was the bit that I did right because initially I think I had this uh, general programming Python course or these these were the courses I took mm -hmm. and they, they were about software engineering. Like I played yeah. like rock scissors, uh, rock paper scissors game. I built those. <laughs> You know, there's no point. Like, when am I going to use that in finance? Never. So in finance, I'm going to use pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, Seaborn, and maybe Scikit-Learn if I want to build some machine learning model. And that's it. Any other library is just an extra on top of these. Mm. So, so this is how I transitioned into it. So I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy, but I am someone who went into the corporate world with zero tech, like zero technical skills. Yeah. So this is literally, I didn't know how to use Microsoft Excel. And now... I can, I, I, I'm a very advanced Excel user. I can definitely code in SQL. I'm a very advanced Tableau user. I'm a very advanced Python for data analysis user. Yeah. And I can also code in Neo4j now, which is a graph database management system, yeah. which is uh, based on Cypher. And uh, <laughs> it's not my favorite coding language because it doesn't read like English at all, but it does the job. <laughs> yeah, that's super interesting. 
Uh, on that Python piece, I was also horrific when I started uh, learning to code. I wasn't even trying to code because what happened was in my, I was, I started a master's in sports science and then we had one coding module. But the thing with coding in sports science, it can mean something else. If you're watching a match and then you write down what event happened, like let's say it was a shot, that's also called coding. So when I read the course and they were like, oh, we have a coding module. I was like, okay, that, that's going to be whatever. And then I missed the first class because this was in Germany. I didn't know how the system worked. Half the <laughs> things on the website weren't in English. So I missed the first one. Then I got, I got to the class the next time, realized, oh, this is actual coding. And then in class, we opened up Python. Then everybody had been at the first class. So they had a rough understanding of how it works. And... Somebody was writing a, am I actually, no, it was SQL. Somebody was writing a select statement. And then I was like, how do you do that? And then she was like, oh, you just press select. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I didn't want to look like I was coding. So I thought I could use any word <laughs> that I wanted to. So I wrote, choose this coming from here, <laughs> thinking it would be the same thing. But yeah, no, that, that was horrific. Python can definitely be so hard to get started with. No, knowing what you know now, now that you are a data analyst, if you were to start again, what would you emphasize more or what sort of path would you take to make it much more efficient? I would start with Excel or spreadsheets in general. I mean, you could use Google Sheets, but mm -hmm. the functionality is not there. I've used Google Sheets before and I absolutely hate it, hate it. So the only reason companies use Google Sheets is because they're small and they cannot afford a partnership with Microsoft. And that's why they use Google Sheets. It doesn't, it doesn't have uh, like nearly as many functions, formulas, there's no VBA, pivot charts, pivot tables. You, you have some, but I mean, the functionality, the world of a difference. So I would start with Excel, then I would focus on SQL just querying stuff, like just query anything. And I would focus on the data analysis bits. So don't focus on database creation, database management, creating tables and all of that. Because if you just want to get your first job, or if you're an entry level data analyst, you're going to have to query the data rather than create the data. Mm -hmm. So then just move on to SQL. Then after that one BI tool, Power BI, Tableau, whichever one you choose, it, it, it'll really only depend on the organization you work for. So most organizations will only have either Tableau or Power BI because it just doesn't make sense to spend millions of dollars on, you know, like two tools that literally do the same thing. Yeah. Um, and I would leave Python last. Honestly, I wouldn't even worry about Python too much because as a beginner or junior data analyst, Python is usually not in the job description. It's a great tool to have, but it's not, um, I would say, an end product tool. So I use Python only to make my own life easier. I use it to clean and transform data, to automate tasks that would be so boring otherwise. So say for example, um, a lot of times I have to do a lot of ad hoc analysis, which is rapid, quick fire ways of answering questions. And I need to reach out to a bunch of people. This data is nowhere. So <laughs> it, it's in their like local spreadsheet somewhere, you know, because it's SME data, right? Yeah. So when I ask them to give this data to me, they give it in like CSV, Excel, they, they point me to like a data source somewhere in the cloud. So you can use Python for this to collect all of that data, clean it, and then merge it into one CSV file or yeah. one JSON file or whatever you want. So you could use Python for this. So it's not too shiny because at the at the end, no one can see what you did in the background. I could have <laughs> yeah. just done everything in, in Excel manually, mm -hmm. sitting there for hours. So it's not really a bank for a buck tool. The most bank for a buck tool nowadays is going to be a data visualization tool because oh, wow. no matter how much I would say effort you put into data cleaning and transformation, if I create a dashboard that people don't know how to use and looks like crap, then people are going to think my work is crap. Yeah. Whereas if, even if I just have mediocre data and you create something that looks so good and it's so easy to use, people will buy into it. Again, this goes back to data storytelling, communication, stakeholder management. Most people who are gonna use your stuff, they're not gonna be techie people. They're like the people who are like, Mo, can you identify the top 10 whatever products and why, why they're the top 10? Or like, why is the uh, conversion rate on our new savings account through this channel lower than you know any of the other savings rates? So they are the kind of people who would ask these questions because they are the business SMEs. Mm. So there's, they're not going to care about 
whether or not you use shiny Python code or you clean it up in Excel and you know you do it for 24 hours. Yeah. Um, so yeah, simply Excel, SQL, Tableau, or Power BI. Put Python on the side. If you have the time and you're good at coding, yeah. learn it. But in general, I'm not a dumb person. I don't think I'm a genius either. So it took me a while to learn. So I think it's a good rule of thumb that it might take you a while to yeah. learn as well. Because yeah. I don't know about your experiences, obviously about Python. We work in probably quite different libraries. Yeah. How long did it take you to get to a level where you could say that I'm actually not bad at it? Probably, honestly, like a year and a half. But that's because the first year was in an academic setting. I tried to go self-taught. I barely even count that because that was such a disaster. So the first year is is a university setting. So maybe we'd have two coding in Python classes and then the rest is like maybe SQL and then theoretical stuff. So that year, and then my first six months after starting this job, that's when I was like, okay, I'm actually an okay coder. Like I can actually walk around and tell people I code and not feel like a fraud. But I'm actually really, <laughs> I'm actually really curious. So I know this is something that a lot of people get confused with because if you're a beginner and you know, okay, I need to learn Excel, SQL and Tableau, let's say. Would you advise people to learn those in parallel or to, to master one, then move on to the next one, master it, or just do a little bit? How, how, would, how, do, pe how do people balance learning multiple things? D depends on your goals. So most people are impatient and I see big YouTube videos hitting off. It's like become a data analyst in one month. And, you know, become a data analyst overnight or something like that, like from zero to hero in 20 days. And I watch those videos and I'm thinking, I have a master's degree under my belt, five years of relevant, very relevant experience working with complex big data in the financial services industry. And I still have so much to go. Mm. So I, if you want to become a data analyst within a month, I would say don't master anything, learn to the extent where you can create one portfolio project you don't even have to understand what you did and apply, right? So you can do it quite quick. If you actually want to become good in the long run, because that's what's going to pay off, then I would say master one first and then move on to the next. Excel is really good for understanding at least tabular data. Mm -hmm. The way you would have to structure data so you can at least pivot it, put it in a pivot table so that you can actually use your data in a certain way. SQL, again, if you just want to get a job, just query something, do some window <laughs> functions and then produce some insights if you want to do it quick. But if you want to do it over the long run, I would say learning Excel, SQL and Tableau, if you learn it every day for, I would, I would say three, four hours, you can learn everything in 18 months. I yeah. think that's realistic. You, you can be very, very good in 18 months and you don't have to feel like a fraud <laughs> yeah. if you go to work. If you just want to get a job, I think a month, I think it's still pushing it. If you do it every single day, yes, you can. But I just, I'm just one of those people that I think long and slow is usually the way to go. Cause if you learn something too quick, I feel like I, did, I made the same mistake with Python. I was just so focused on, oh my God, I just need to make this code work. I had no clue what the code did. Yeah. I just, I was just like, oh my God, this iteration, it's not working. My class <laughs> is not working. It's not inheriting. What am I doing wrong? And I fixed the code, but yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. This is like, I, you can do a VLOOKUP in Excel, but why are you actually doing it? Or how do you use an index match? Like, why do you actually use it? Because when you go to work, it's not gonna be about which function to use. It's gonna be about which function do I need to use to solve this problem? You, you're gonna have to apply your technical skills. So if yeah. you go to work and you have to think about your technical skills, it's probably not the right way to, to go. Yeah. If you go to work, you just need to be sure that you can do whatever they ask you to do using whatever tool you've already mastered. Yeah. And people, I think sometimes forget that there is a technical interview for a lot of jobs. So if you just brute force your way through a project or you just memorize how to do a couple of different things, it'll be tough to pass that technical interview if you are trying the one month, two month thing, which I'm sure there are people who've done that, but I think it's good when you're getting advice to think about what works for the masses rather than the super smart people who went to Harvard and then just decided, oh, I'll do data science and picked it up <laughs> in a month or whatever.